This is the second video where we're going to machine this, uh, what I'm calling the inner contour, this green area on here. Firstly, um, this area here, the, the green area is highlighted here. It's nine millimeters deep from Z0. This is our Z0 on the top. And again, I'm going to approach it from the same corner on here with cutter compensation off. Turn on my cutter compensation. This is going to be G01 line going up to here. Again, G01 going across to here another G01 and we want to look now at how to do an arc. This is a clockwise arc so G02 and back to a G01 to bring us down to here then an anti-clockwise or counter-clockwise arc G03. Uh, G01 just go a little bit past this area on here turn off color compensation and again back to sort of where I've started. Okay, so I've just uh, created the program here. I'm just going to show you how to put in a breakpoint. So if you basically just click on here, my inner contour program is starting from this line on here. So this is the program that I've created in the first video. So I'll just play there. So it brings me to the beginning of my inner contour program. So I'm just going to single step down through that. So again, I am wrapping to x minus 12, y minus 12. I'm already at that position, but it's always a good idea that if I wanted to start the program at this particular line, um, just in case I have manually moved the machine, I'm making sure that I'm going clear of the job again before I come down in Z. So I'm still using tool number two on here. Okay, so we'll single step. So this is going to wrap it to x minus 12, y minus 12. I am going to uh, wrap it down to z10. I'm feeding down to z minus 9 at a feed rate of 100. Turning on color compensation to the left. This is again a g01. g01 is modal, so it'll be a straight line move into x8 at a feed rate of 200. So the controller again needs to read the line ahead to determine which side of this line, if you like, we need to go. So up to y82. Again, this is g01 to x26, y92. That kind of puts on the angle, and you can see here we're getting a little problem on here where we're leaving this pip, but we'll, we'll come back to that in a minute. So I'm now at x82. So here I'm putting on my clockwise arc. So the end point of the arc is at x92, y82, and the radius value is 10. Okay, so hopefully you can see that there. Okay, so that puts on the arc. Again, the common mistake here is that G02 is also modal, so you have to switch back to G01 to do a straight line move ending at Y21. We're going to do a counterclockwise arc, and again, the end point of the arc is going to be at X80, Y9, and a radius value of 12. And again, just radius values, they're millimeter dimensions so on the half, so if you want a 10 millimeter arc, you have to put the decimal point after it. So there's our arc. Turn off cutter compensation. So that means that we will, the center of the cutter, the 12 o'clock position, if you like, in this case of the cutter, will be at X6. So I've gone two millimeters just past this edge on here. And then back to where I started with cutter compensation off. Here we can see we're getting an error up on here. Um, let's maybe move that a little bit. So we've got a missing decimal point. So it's actually not going to x minus 12. Um, we need a decimal point in on here. So I need to correct that. So again, just don't modify in this window. So I'm going to close this window. If you remember this window, we can only go file and save as. Uh, so it's a bit of a chore to find where that file is actually saved. So I'll open this window here to edit the program. Okay, so one of the issues that I have is I want to put in my decimal point in here. So we want to see if we can get rid of these pips that are being left on here. I suppose maybe the first option is to use a bigger cutter. So hopefully it will get rid of these uh, two little pips that are standing up on here. So to 
I need to go back up on here. So again, if I want to change the cutter, obviously the advantage of cutter compensation is that all of these values will still remain the same because the machine is going to compensate by the radius value of the cutter stored in the machine. So I'm going to input in my tool change. So I'm going to put in two tool one, M06. Once we do a tool change, we have to turn the spindle back on again. So it's going to be S. I'm going to go slightly slower this time, 900, M03. Turn it on clockwise. I'm going to wrap it to my X minus 12, Y minus 12, but I need to be careful on here now. I need to ensure that I'm reading the tool length of tool number one. Otherwise, the machine will be compensating by the tool length of tool number two. Um, so my depth would then be wrong. Okay, so before I'm going to do this uh, any Z move, I'm going to go G forty three H zero one. So, in other words, read the tool length of tool number one. Then wrap it down to Z ten. Feed down to Z minus nine. And again, I need to be very careful on here. I've got a G41, so I'm going to be compensating at the moment by the radius value of tool number two, which was already in the machine. So we've already stored that in the machine register here, G41D02. I need to ensure that I'm using the radius value of tool number one. So I'll save that and close my window. Reset the model, reset the work cell, play to here. And again, just single step down quickly through here. So we've changed the tool, turn the spindle on clockwise at 900 revs per minute. Wrap it into my X minus 12, Y minus 12, read the length of tool number one. Wrap it down to Z10, feed down to Z minus nine. Cut our compensation to the left. Uh, compensating by the radius value stored in the offsets page for tool number one. Uh, so now I'm going to move into X8 with color compensation on. Again, you can see it to the left on here, the status light. Up, over, so now we've got rid of this pip on the side. Over, round, our arc, 